Hi guys, Mickey here, and I'm now going to do my question and answer video. Basically, I asked people on Twitter to send in some questions for me so I could answer them, and I've got loads to go through, so let's start. The first one is from Joella Harding. What's the best piece of evidence you have ever recorded? That's a tricky one because we have lots of equipment that we use, and each one gives off a different, like, uh, how would you say it? credibility I suppose of evidence you have the spirit box you have the ovulus we have physical and personal experiences and you know what some people believe in these things some people don't some people say it's coincidence the evidence wise I suppose in the ancient Ram Inn we had in the barn area we were asking the spirit uh, what it was going to do to us and it was saying harm and things like that. And also we had a spirit box in the old Red House pub where we had amazing evidence come through asking questions and giving correct answers to control questions as well. So, but I think the most, one of the best pieces of evidence we've ever had was when we were at Overston Manor. It was quite early in UK Haunted's like, lifetime. And me and Alex were sat behind the bar and basically the story is there's a person or a man, old man, who sits in the bar at night time when it's all closed up and they catch him on CCTV. It's just like whoosh, hunched over the bar. Well, basically, we sat in it. It was about two in the morning and we just sat down and we asked, well, I asked if there's a spirit of the man that haunts the bar. Can he come and do something for us, make a noise, blah, blah, blah. And after about five, ten seconds, we hear this massive bang coming from behind the bar. And me and Alex were shocked. I mean, you've probably seen the video, but it was crazy. And we basically found out that it was one of the old uh, little cupboard doors behind the bar. It had a magnetic seal. And obviously it was closed and something needs to bang it. But so, yeah, that's what I'm going on. The, uh, the bang in Overton Manor. Right. The next question is from Sarah, Miss Salvatore. Sarah Cullen, I believe. In Wales. Have you ever had a bad experience whilst investigating? If so, what was it? I suppose you mean bad experience like a possession or a demon maybe or an evil spirit. We've had a few that are possibly, I don't want to say evil, but weren't very nice. And we had uh, some, some stones thrown at Rudland Castle in Wales. And we couldn't see where they were coming from or where they were landing. It's really strange. But when we were talking about, because this was in Wales, North Wales, and we were saying about we're English and they were getting louder and more angry, it seemed. <laughs> but I suppose for bad experiences, I would say it has to be when you feel a spirit go through you and makes you feel sick, poorly, gives you really bad headaches. And I had that recently in Fort Paul. We were in, a, in the vaults or the cells underground and I felt something go through me and I was nearly physically sick instantly. I had headache, I was sweating, I was hot. I felt really sick and I just, did, I was not happy and I don't know. But then again, so I've, already, I've also had that at Drakeler Tunnels recently as well, where I was in the surgery room and Alex had just had the same experience just before me, actually, about five, ten minutes before. And then I got it, and I was hot, felt, feeling sick. So, I don't know. But I've also had that town and county club in Northampton. So it's just maybe just me. I just pick up on, on feelings. I don't know, but it's always bad, <laughs> sick feelings. So, I don't know. But that's what I'm going with, the sick feelings. It's not nice. Next question is from Linda Geary, Linda. For how long before UK Haunt was formed were you interested in the paranormal and why? I would say I got into the paranormal because of Most Haunted, really. Uh, so whatever you think of Most Haunted, whether it's fake, whether it's real, whether it's staged, whatever, it got me into the paranormal and basically doing what I'm doing now. Because I was fascinated, especially with Derek, how can, you know, these things are talking to him, these dead beings. And 
Like it just amazed me, like with the stones thrown and the noises, the footsteps. I was it's just crazy. I I was fascinated by it basically. So next question is from Tracy at Tracers. What is your book about your writing and when do you hope it to get posted? Well this is um I wouldn't say I'm writing a book. I am writing well I suppose I am. I'm just writing stuff down, how I got started, uh, ideas about the paranormal, things I hope to achieve, experiences I've had with different people, different groups. So it's, it's, it's not, I'm not looking for it to be released for a long time, to be honest. It's just in case in the future, if it ever happens, if I ever get the chance to get a book published, then I will have some of it finished basically already. The next question is from Caroline McDonnell. Do you believe Ouija boards are dangerous and are they an important tool for paranormal investigating? I don't believe they're dangerous at all. I've used them on public events for, I would say, eight years, six to eight years. And I've never ever had a bad experience, never ever seen anybody else have a bad experience. It's normally always uh, I'd say family members that have passed come through to see someone on the board. I mean, I don't, I don't really go on Ouija boards because I don't think they're credible evidence because anyone can push it. So it's not really necessarily a spirit. So I don't believe that for me, me, like me and Alex do not use them on our investigations when it's just us, but public events we do, we bring them along, but we've never had any bad experiences. So I don't believe they're dangerous if you know what you're doing. So oh, it's not like anything. If you don't know how to use it, it's not going to work properly. So, Bill Duncan next. All right, Bill. Have you ever farted on an investigation and hoped it hadn't been caught on film? <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, when we were in Wales for the first time, we were at Ogmore Castle. And before we started making blooper videos, which are very funny, you could check them out on YouTube. Uh, I did accidentally fart. I'm not going to deny it. And Alex said to me, oh, we're going to put it on a, blo on a blooper video. And I was a bit embarrassed because I thought, oh, that's, in that's shameful, like farting on camera and people know you fart sort of thing. But now we just do it all the time and that's what most of the bloopers videos are for. So, <laughs> cheers, Bill. Uh, the next question is from Mar Marie Jeff. Would you go to a private home to investigate paranormal activity? We get contacted quite a lot by people who say their homes are haunted and we always follow up the messages we get from them yes we what's happened what's going on can we come and have a look but every time we never get a follow-up message or email so we we would do yes but we've never been given the opportunity yeah come along to this time this date and see what you can get but we've never had that follow-up so we would do, but maybe you've got a home that's haunted. Let us know. Got a few questions here. It's from Jenny Mooney's. Why did you get into ghost hunting? Well, I've already answered that. Most haunted, fascinated by it. Didn't really know much about ghosts and stuff at that point. And they showed me the way, basically. Do you have a ghost in your home? I do have a ghost in my home. When I first moved into my house that I'm there at the moment, I've been in there nearly three years and within the first say a couple of months I realised there was things in my house. My daughter's curtains were being opened at night time and also her bed covers were being pulled off her. And also my eldest son saw a dark shadow of a man in the corner of his bedroom. Excuse me. And basically I ain't having that. So I contacted one of my friends at the time and got her to come out and cleanse the house and basically all the rooms upstairs are protected with crystals but that's it the kitchen is not the living room the dining room the stairs the hallway and to this day i still hear footsteps running up and down the stairs and i think oh why are the children out of bed like this is at night time and i go upstairs look in their bedrooms and they're all snoring so I can't really explain that. Maybe it's still there. 
It doesn't like the fact that it can't get in the bedrooms. I don't know. But, but yeah, my house is possibly still haunted. Have you ever felt terrified by a ghost on investigations? I've never ever been scared of a ghost. There's one incident at Denby Castle in North Wales where there's a back entrance and it leads down to a massive wide staircase and it leads when you get to the bottom of the staircase it leans to, or it turns to the right and the first time i was there it freaked the hell out of me and i only would stay at the top of these stairs i would not go down and i, I couldn't tell you why i just had a really bad feeling that something was there and it was watching me and it was really bad but recently we've been back and i conquered my fear i went down on a lone vigil all the way to the bottom around the corner it took some i don't know i can't tell you but it was i did it and i'm really proud that i did it but that's the only time i've ever worried about going to a location or something bad that's going to happen to me next question from paula allen taylor when are you going after famous dead royals well we've been to fotheringay castle where Richard III was born and also Mary Queen of Scots was beheaded. We tried to contact them, but as far as I'm aware, they're the only royals that have been at the location that we've been to so far. So we'll go anywhere, any location, any place that we're allowed in basically. So if it's royals, they're all the better. I'd love to talk to Henry VIII, Elizabeth I. You know, these people were proper psycho I think and they just did what they wanted didn't care so yeah I'd like to I'd love to meet them have a chat with them see what they can do next one is from Holly jackets 97 what has been your all-time favorite location to ghost hunt all-time lo favorite location it's got to be ancient Ramian I'm afraid ever since most haunted when there Stuart got attacked in the barn and ghost adventures have been there and now uk wanted to have been there <laughs> but it was an amazing place old john humphreys legend love that man looks like santa claus but he's brilliant man love him to bits he's brilliant and uh, yeah the history of the demonic activity is supposed to be there it's just absolutely crazy and to finally actually get in there and investigate was was brilliant so but I'm afraid there is there is a version of that on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Uh, but there's also the proper version that we filmed for our American TV series, which is our season finale, episode 13, and lucky for some, which will be available and airing very soon in America. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, so that's the only way you'll see it at the moment, I'm afraid. We can't release that because contracts, you know. So... Next question, but yeah, Ancient Ram Inn, amazing place, absolutely amazing. Tom Buckmaster, what was the most interesting piece of evidence you captured at the Ancient Ram Inn? <laughs> Talking about that place again. Uh, I think when we were all in the Bishop's Room, which is supposed to be the most haunted room in England, that's what John said anyway, and three of us were on the beds, the three beds, and Alex was filming us, and something was tickling my right knee was it the succubus i don't know that was pretty interesting I mean, it didn't scare me it didn't freak me out but i don't know that was pretty good it did tickle though and some of the evidence that we captured on the spirit box was there like we asked no well, like, there's a woman's voice come through on the spirit box we said oh is there a lady here and it said the lady and we said what's what's your name and she said satan and then it come through who killed her so we asked the question who died who killed you and she said my husband and it's just crazy so definitely spirit box in the ram and also the succubus and our final question of the night is from jennifer amy a good friend vintage jen in edinburgh home of the vaults and the old Greyfriars Cemetery, yeah. Where was your very first investigation and what was your very first paranormal experience? 
it's got to be the Golden Fleece Inn, which is in York, with Richard Felix. It was crazy, my first one, 2008 that was. I went up there, and when I saw Richard Felix walking that door, I'm like, wow, oh my God, he's, in, he's from Most Hornies, you know, he's on TV. And I'm going to do a ghost hunt with him. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. But, yeah, and the experience I had there, I was on the table, the uh, small table, and we were doing table tipping, and it was only me and my partner at the time on that table, and basically walked out of the room along the hallway and halfway down the stairs, and there was only me and her on it. And that was crazy. And I know she went pushing it, and I went pushing it. It was just basically leg at a time walking like this. Absolutely, I couldn't explain that, really couldn't. But yeah, that was both in the same place, crazy. And also another question from Jennifer, what got you into the paranormal? Well, I've answered this twice already. Most haunted at the time, I loved it, absolutely loved it. So yeah, I'd like to thank everybody for their questions tonight. Thank you for watching this video. I know it's a bit long, but I think you got to know the real Mickey a bit better. So, uh, see you later. Don't forget, don't be scared. That's right.